Hi everybody, Adam Steele here again, and today we're going to be looking at some of the more technical stuff in Reaper, uh, because I know a lot of you guys don't necessarily use the latest and greatest in computer hardware. Some of you are using relatively old machines or on quite tight budgets, and that's perfectly fine. Reaper is really good with older machines because you can get the absolute most out of them. I know quite a few people who've moved from something like Pro Tools to Reaper because the the software like Pro Tools will stop every five seconds with oh, CPU overload. But even so, there are things that we can tweak and things that we can play with that might just make Reaper that much more useful, responsive, less dropouts and clicks on your machine. Because generally Reaper really, really tries to get the most out of what you have. But things like pops and clicks, that's when the, the poor computer itself can't keep up with what you're asking it to do. And so we can tweak things like buffers and different settings to give us more options, more breathing room, if that's what you need. So today, that's what we're going to dive into. Hi, everyone. Here we are in glorious 4K. And this is how we're going to tweak some of the settings in Reaper, especially if you're having trouble with your machine kind of stuttering and that kind of thing. The obvious one is we'll start simple and we'll go to the top right here and click this thing in the corner, which brings up the audio device preferences, which is the first port of call. Because sample rate, you've chosen that for whatever your reason is, but then block size is to do with the samples that you have as a buffer. The shorter the buffer, the quicker a turnaround to the lower latency you get, but then the computer finds it difficult to deal in some circumstances. So in my case, I'm running 48K and I'm running 512 samples of latency because I'm mixing and I don't need a particularly short uh, latency round trip. But if I was tracking, that might be request block size here of 128 or less. And that's when you get into choppy waters with a heavy mix. So play around with that requesting block size. If that won't change the sample buffer, you'll have to hit the ACO configuration button. And that will bring up the menu for whatever interface you have. On Core Audio uh, for Mac, it's slightly different, but it's not that different. But now let's dive straight into some of the more extreme stuff so most of what we're looking at is in this reaper preferences there's a lot going on that you can change as you can see but yeah you've got things like maximum undo memory it's currently set to 256 megabytes i like to change that to 512 just in case i'm not a very very long uh, mix session doing some really complicated stuff that means i've got more undo ability but you do need a lot of you need extra ram for that uh, I've got a lot of RAM on this machine, so I'm not bothered, so give me the option. Thanks. Now, there are other things you can do with undo here, but the main one that I want to find at the bottom is advanced UI slash system tweaks. Now, in here, there are some options, uh, the advanced system and multi-processing tweaks. And the one that I'm going to do here is restrict Reaper to specific CPUs. Now, I'm on a very powerful machine here. It's a, uh, it's one of the uh, AMD 5950Xs. It's a 16-core processor, which means that when I port Task Manager, it looks like this and has loads and loads going on. Now, from what I've been told, uh, every other processor that you see on here is not real they're what's called SMT or symmetrical multi-thread, otherwise known in Intel world as hyper-threading. And they go back to before kind of dual core and quad core were a thing where to get more performance out of a machine, even if the main processor was busy, it kind of presents an extra processor to the machine where it can kind of offload some work. So it's almost like kind of getting the queue kind of queued up better, which in modern day, in some workloads can be really helpful, but in others, like audio processing, it can be quite a pain in the backside. Now, one option is you can go into your BIOS of your machine and disable multi-threading or SMT. That might be useful for you. Uh, but um, if you want those things to still work for every other program, then you can't do that. And this is where this really comes in useful. Restrict Reaper to specific CPUs. And so you'll see there's a list here of nearly, of, oh yeah, 31 and 0 makes 32. 
processors on a 16 core machine. So I'm going to change this to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. And not use the uh, multi threaded, you know, the, the multi SMT stuff at all. So I'm going to hit OK and apply. And this may need a restart, it may not, but we'll see what happens now. And when I hit play on this very dense track that I've got going on, you could see that some of these threads, uh, every other one is just not getting involved at this point, which is really useful because that means that now this is going to run arguably and possibly a bit more efficiently. You might be able to see at the top here, I've got the CPU monitor, which seems to be less useful these days because it's trying to tell me that uh, we're running at like 4% CPU and 1% CPU, except that when we look at Task Manager, we're pulling, yes, it says 8, 9% now, but when I hit play, more like 20% usage. Which on a 16 core, that's a lot. And I've been mixing this um, in 96 kilohertz recently, which means that every file live gets resampled from its original sample rate up to 96 kilohertz. And that can be really quite demanding on a CPU uh, because that's one thing that Reaper does that a lot of other doors don't is if you change sample rate, it doesn't have to resample everything there and then. It can do it on the fly which is incredible, but very CPU taxing. Going back to our preferences menu, that may be something you want to do. It may not actually do anything for you. It depends on your processor, but let's move on to other things that we can do. But there's an experimental tick box here for reduce CPU use of silent tracks during playback. So I'm gonna tick that and see if that does anything. That might help if I've got a big project with lots of tracks that have something on then don't, then do, then don't. That might help, but it does say it's experimental. But I like playing with experimental stuff. We already talked about the buffer here. The buffering, here we go. So there's auto detect the number of needed audio processing threads. I'm gonna take this off auto and change this to 16 and hit apply. And hopefully with the restricted uh, Reaper choice that we made earlier, that will mean that it doesn't use SMT at all. Below that, we've got thread priority, which is you always set to highest, which means that if there's anything going on in the background, like Google Chrome or, you know, anything that isn't really needing a real round trip latency like we need, then it kind of gets told you can wait, which is useful. Uh, but then the behavior here is something that I always change. I make it aggressive, which means that if anything else is trying to get a CPU time, it gets made to wait more aggressively. If you get to super aggressive at the top, that can cause some UI problems. It becomes a slightly less responsive trying to do anything. Now there's a media buffer here, which is 1.2 seconds. I'm gonna change that to 2.4 seconds, but what can happen there now is that if I change a clip or anything in the middle of tracking, that can take a couple of seconds then to reflect that change. So I've just got to keep that in mind that the, what I do with a tweak might take a little longer to sonically make its difference, but at the cost of stability. There's also disable media buffering for tracks with open MIDI editors. I've had issues before, so I'm gonna untick this, where if I open up a, a MIDI a keyboard on one of the tracks whilst I'm playing back, suddenly the whole system goes because <laughs> that takes it over the edge from being able to cope to not being able to cope. Again, that, that couple of seconds here with the, the, the media buffer, um, now if I change something, it's gonna take a couple of seconds to correct that, but I'm okay with that, so I'm gonna keep that as that is. Now, anticipative effects processing. This is one of my favorite things that Reaper does, is if you've got a really busy project, it can, ahead of time, do the VST processing, all that kind of stuff, uh, get the plugins done so that it's not, getting any of these CPU overload errors that other DAWs tend to do. I'm gonna change it from 200 milliseconds to 400 so there's more render ahead. And I'm gonna allow this on tracks without effects. 
so that it spreads the load across more CPU cores. And I'm going to allow it on tracks with open MIDI editors. And then there's allow live effects multiprocessing. And I've got this set to six cores so that if I've got more than one track on record, say a full drum kit, it allows those, C if I'm using VSTs on live monitoring, it allows those to be spread across uh, multiple processor cores. Used to be much more of an issue back when multiprocessing meant two actual sockets and two actual physical CPUs in machines. So we're talking like G5 Power Max and that kind of thing. Whereas now it's far more common to just get a multi, heavily multi-cored single processor, which can be much more, um, yeah, deals with this a lot easier. Onto the rendering window, we get some very uh, similar controls here, but these are when you are bouncing, exporting, rendering. I've had problems sometimes where I'll have a little click at the start of a render or a k or you know, issues, and sometimes a stutter in a render. Sometimes It's almost always a plugin's fault, but here we can try and fix that kind of thing. So you can choose a different block size to use when rendering. Uh, so what you could do is that that will default to the same as you've been using on your interface. But what you could do is extend that a little bit so that there's more uh, of a grace period and a render time. So I might put 1024 in there and see how that goes. I'm allowing anticipative effects when rendering. I'm also going to tick process all tracks during stem render. Uh, I'm doing this because sometimes I'll do something like I'll export uh, a few stems for a track, but including maybe a reverb send. Now, if a reverb send has got sound going to it from other tracks that I'm not exporting the stems of, or say something's got uh, a side chain kind of ducking, or you know, something like track spacer going on, even if I'm not rendering out the stem for the other track that has the track spacer or ducking or reverb or whatever on it, I want that effect to do its thing. So I'm gonna tick this box. And that means that everything will come out as I expect it, even though it might be a little bit slower in terms of rendering time. Lastly, we're going to go into the plugins compatibility menu because there's one that I tend to choose here, which is uh, pre-zero plugin output buffers. Now, what that does is some, some plugins, if you're in the middle of playing a song and then you go to render and bounce, it might still have some audio in its buffer. So when you hit play, it goes Bleh! and kind of, throws that out so pre-zero the output buffers means that when you go to render and go to bounce it tells that plugin whatever you had in your buffer get rid of it go and that means that you don't have that awful thing anymore so that's kind of been uh, fixed these days so there you go there are so many things that you can do in Reaper, and there is even more uh, that we cover in the Ultimate Reaper Guide, which is the course that is available through ProMix Academy. Link is down in the description. So there you go. Check that out. Thanks for watching.